Yeah. This should be like 15, 20 minutes if you want. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's a little... Oh, no, well, it's uh, as I, long as you like, dude. I don't have that, time. that much to say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that much to say about anything. Salmon was on the menu, I guess. Did you enjoy your, your supper? This is this is after after Hal's dinner. So so was it a good meal? Uh, I think you know the answer. It was, well, I I'm hoping it was good. Sometimes you never know. It's a pretty safe bet. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Here in Portugal, anyway. Uh huh. The food, the wine, the coffee. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And those little. Those little, what do you call, oh, natas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the pastéis de nata, which yeah, are nata. cream custard they were pastels. They were right here in Lisboa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I had them up north today. I had oh. one up north. And they just call them nata up there. Uh, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, again, they don't, they don't bother with many things anymore. <laughs> Pardon? I don't. The north is like the south. It's... In most places. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If, and it, yeah, it's the same in England for some reason. Mm -hmm. And you guys are in the same time zone as England. Yeah, we are. There's some correlation, I think. Because as soon as you get to Spain, the south is like the south. Yeah. And the north is like the north. Yeah, yeah, true. But Italy, yeah, Italy, Italy, Italy is the same. Yeah. yeah. For instance. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I'll have and to do France, that. too, I think. France is also as, uh, as is respectful of the usual dynamics between the north and the south, I guess, as well. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yep. But, um, yeah. Yes. Oh, what else is in the same time zone? I guess Morocco? I don't know. I, maybe Morocco? I'm going to get down there one day. It's on the list of mm -hmm. things to do. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Antonio. Yes. <laughs> it's my, I'm on my list of things to do as well. I've never been to Morocco, and I want, I want to go everywhere, always. I, I want to visit everything ever. And Morocco is mostly desert, really, so yeah. there's kind of feels like home to you, some, maybe. It will, it will, maybe. You know, maybe you're going to, Are you straying away from the desert sometimes, or...? Home. Home. It doesn't even feel like home. Oh. Mm -hmm. Cordoba felt like home. Oh. Okay. I've never been to Arizona, but that makes sense. But I did a, I, guess. I just did a DNA test. Uh -huh. And it came back yesterday and said I'm 99.5% European in origin. That's weird. And How'd are that you? Happen? I don't know. It's a mystery to me. I'm relying on my spit. Yeah. That's how you yeah, test yeah, the DNA. And it's, uh, <laughs> not, not, not everyone relies on their spit mm. or to, for knowledge, I guess. Some people do. Mm. But, uh, but, um, but uh, so are your, are your parents, actually, but while you're on that subject, while we're on that subject, on that subject were your parents I European? Think their parents were European. As most Americans, really. But a lot of that information, yeah, is lost to me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, I haven't had much of a, because people died and shit, so I don't, I don't really know. But now I'm finding out with this DNA test. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Why did you, uh, if that's, if it's not, uh, not too much to ask. Oh, really? Yeah. A friend of mine got it for me. So. So, that's, that, and I'm one-tenth of a percent Iberian. Oh, really? Okay, one-tenth. So that means... <laughs> How did that Iberian? happen? So, uh, well, I guess that means you're one-tenth Spanish or Portuguese or... One-tenth of a percent. One-tenth of a percent. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's like fractional. It's not even <laughs> It's not even one percent. I guess... Ten percent of one percent. One of your... One of, yeah, sure. It sounds like a one-night stand. It sounds like someone made out with someone, I think. Mm -hmm. We had <laughs> a beautiful night. In, in, in the early 700s <laughs> or something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe the DNA kind of predicts the future. Oh. Not, it just doesn't tell you about the past. Maybe it, it uh, also, it's like a, the Ouija board of saliva. Hmm. 
<laughs> well, how, how so, though? We'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> sure. Mm, uh, and uh, uh, the Ouija board. So, so the, I guess the point is that uh, you should slob all over a piece of wood and then maybe slice a glass all over it and then you have your answer. Antonio. <laughs> not, 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 well, not well on it, I guess. I, I, I understand. I understand. I understand. <laughs> it, was, it was a sweet attempt uh, at comedic improvisation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you overshot the runway. No, well, you know, you kind of. Okay. Yeah, I know. I you're know. young. Uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, well, but you're doing it in front of thousands and thousands of people. Well, hopefully. <laughs> well, well hope. 20 or 30. Well, 30. Well, uh, uh, both of them. Both of them. Hi. Hello, one person. Here, listen, you have to calm down. Yes. Because you'll see this later, uh -huh. and you'll go, oh, I'm too jittery, I'm too I'm nervous. always jittery, I'm, yeah. Oh, maybe that's your thing. Yeah, it is my thing. No, no, don't worry. It? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a, I, can, I can chill, but uh, usually I'm, uh, I just enjoy doing these, these things. One, one YouTube comment was like, recently, was like, um, this uh, this is awesome because this uh, interview it was positive because this uh, this uh, interviewer seems like um, a very keen puppy and I thought that was sweet so I'll take I'll take that I'll no no worries <laughs> I just I, just, yeah, I, know. I tend to I tend to drink a lot of coffee and or drink a lot of beer before and after and during interviews. So uh, while at festivals, so that's why I'm like this. Well, mm. I'm on a different clock. Yeah, I know, I know. I've talked, I've spoken to you before, so so I know that I feel it's calmer. As if I'm, I've already left. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And you're just, mm -hmm. you're just at this point, shoving a mic up to my phantom vapor trail. Well, I'm gone. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no, it's over there. But it's been fun. It's been fun. Bye. No. Was that 20 minutes? I no, think so. No, I think it was like two. You can buy two dens, 20 minutes in about two. It's about, no, a little, right, little, little long. Try this for me now. Yeah, tell, tell me. Well, I'm the sister and I'm hyperactive. Yeah, yeah, we're kind of uh, hyper. But, I, I, I'll, but you seem very well, calm. Well, <laughs> Yeah. No, but I'm more mellow as a person than, than he is. Yeah, but I'm not always like this. I can calm down. It's fine. You don't have to. I'm, I'm just saying it'd be fun to try it on. No, it's sure. fine. Okay. See, and Woo. that's why we're here in the South. Uh huh. This kind of energy uh -huh. is more frequent in the North of most places. I'm sorry. Which one? The high energy. High energy is more frequent in the South. No, in the North of the most north. places. But yeah. because this is opposite, uh -huh. we were just talking about. The north here feels mm -hmm. like the south in most places. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Mm. Or at least, you know, the same with the UK. Mm -hmm. um, and in the north, people are kind of more on top of it, a little ahead of the beat. And uh -huh. in the south, people tend to be behind the beat. Yeah. Yeah. And see, right now, I'm using the powers I have to calm you down and slow you sure. down just to see. If it feels okay for a minute, only a minute, uh -huh. and then you could spring back up. No, it's fine. To the north here in the south. <laughs> uh -huh. I can I can be chill as well. Just like when I'm in work mode, like I'm out, I'm I try to be on. So so it's kind of like almost a, a, a reflex now. So so but it's um but yeah I totally get what you mean. You know in Portugal, uh, I think the national pastime is drinking coffee and sinking in the sun. I would say like people just get together to do that. Well, so what are we doing? We're just grabbing a cup of coffee and doing not much else. And I'm not sure if like an international audience are, is aware of this, but if they've never been to Portugal, but that's kind of our thing. That's that's what we that's what we do, as you know, because you have friends over here. Is that yeah. yeah. We were just talking about maybe it's time to move here. Really? Yeah, but I would get a place up north. Uh huh. Because it's more like. Mm hmm. 
the south. Yeah, 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 I totally get it. Have you thought of a place uh, anywhere specifically? Uh, uh, near Alveda, probably. Oh, okay. Maybe a, we were in Penino okay. yes, oh, yesterday. Really? Or this morning. <laughs> And uh, that felt pretty good. It was small enough and slow enough and, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. It just felt, well, there's a lot of ocean. Sure. That'd be a nice change. Yeah. And it's not far from Lisbon at all, so it's like 25 minutes maybe. Yeah. Or Penino, like near the... the it's three hours. Three hours? Maybe we're talking about the different Penino, because there's a, a top of a Penino, because places, you know, uh, names are repeat themselves, right. you know. So okay. uh, I, I was thinking like the top of a hill, which is like mm -hmm. near Centro and Cascais over here in Portugal. So over here, I mean um, around Lisbon, mm -hmm. which is like 45 minutes. Well, you minutes. probably can't go wrong anywhere around here. Well, sure, <laughs> sure, sure. So it's uh, 45. I would say, I would say like tops an my, hour. My wife is from Denmark, so mm -hmm. my my kids got dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. And if I'm 99.5% European, it's, then... It's I a shoe-in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I just turned 60. Oh, really? Uh, oh. A few weeks, or one month ago. So now I'm ready for the next change, the big change. Mm -hmm. Sometime before death, to sink in to a different comfort zone. Mm. This might be the place. Mm. It's right on the edge. It's right on the edge. Well, it's but it's it's it is uh, unless you're moving in into Lisbon or the Algarve or uh, moving to Lisbon uh, or I mean into in the sense of the city vibe. Uh, Porto is a little also uh, high strong, a little bit. Lisbon is incompar incomparable, but um, all, the Algarve is usually. Especially in the summer, by by and far the the, the most highly highest strung place because of all the tourism and all because of Wait, everyone uh, the the south the the, the oh. south region so the south, most the southernest region so um, because there's a lot of I guess well British tourists and everyone over there is kind of fed up of <laughs> of them <laughs> if, oh, but, British teens yeah drunk drunk, drunk British teens yeah. uh, causing havoc yeah. and uh, but uh, really? even though but They're that, desperate to get out of there. Yeah. They have a little sunshine and, yeah. and a beach with actual sand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some... Not rocks. Yeah. And, and not well, dreary they, weather. They have also. giant sand up there on the beaches. It's those big pebbles. Anyway. Anyway. is from Denmark, but I'm pretty sure I can, it's a safe bet that she's not high strung. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Okay. It's okay. So one question about music. Okay. For, okay. Now we're done. And then we're done. Uh, I promise. So, uh, future standards. Yeah. Do you there think you that, there you go. Uh, do you think that future standards will be, which, what are the future standards that we're going to have apart from not music? So this is a music is not a music question in disguise, actually. So you, oh. know, you made those future standards musically. Yeah. But then we're gonna have some future standards. No. Uh, they're substandard. No, no. Vissos está 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 pinhar. Tá. Okay. Sorry, sorry. That's cool. I'm just checking that you're in frame. <laughs> I'm, See, yeah. I'm slowly leaving. Yes. <laughs> um, I can only speak about music. Uh, uh -huh. As far as any other standard. I'm specifically talking about a genre uh -huh. of music that was called piano standards. Yeah. So nobody's writing like that anymore. So I just, it was just the challenge to, to attempt it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like a dying art or a dead language. Nobody speaks it anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can reverberate all the old standards and that's fine. But um, you need three elements to write a, a standard. And um, the scientist and me uh, experimented with the notion. And so that's what you hear now in uh -huh. this new album. Yeah, yeah. 
that's the only thing I can talk about as far as standards. Uh huh. Okay. Otherwise, because maybe we could we could we could we could be going a lot of different directions, but uh, but uh, for instance on on uh, but on on the giant sand thing, you had. I saw your Primavera show, by the way, and it's and uh, you guys were doing a ra like these mm, mm, almost mar not mariachi because that's very specific, but very Latin Mexican influenced, I guess, or at least America South, uh, uh, really? the South of the. Uh, you were doing these arrangements that you weren't doing, like. In the, the Glastonbury show I watched on YouTube, and and it was very different, like two months apart or something, and and uh, so. If you paid close attention, uh -huh. you would notice that the personnel in the Glastonbury show was different than the yeah. personnel in the Primavera show, sure. and that's why that's because the for the last since 2010. Mm -hmm. In 2002, the band became. Danish, uh -huh. and then in 2010, we took on a contingent back from Tucson, these younger guys. Uh -huh. So we were a giant, giant sand for a while, uh -huh. 10, 12 people. And then the last two years or so, we became only the Arizona guys. Uh -huh. So now me and the Arizona guys, um, they're younger. They're, the ages are 28. Uh, 33. Uh -huh. Tur is from Denmark on base, but he's lives in, he's been living in Tucson for uh -huh. seven years. And now, what you didn't see is our original drummer from the first couple albums mm -hmm. is playing with us, Winston, who's uh -huh. 55. Okay. And this band feels I love the Danes. The sound of the Danes was exceptional, and where they were coming from was from a very soulful, sweet, phenomenal place. Mm -hmm and how they think and how they put things together and their appreciation, their aesthetics for the vintage instruments. It's really cool. And their playmanship is outstanding. With these guys now from Tucson, it's, it's so much as if when I started, like these young guys in some way are of the same fiber and mentality as I was when I was their age. And it, the, dif the difference is only because we grew up there, we have this thing where, like, we know when we change something within the song, it doesn't have to be explained because we've been saturated with so many sounds of that area mm -hmm. that we just go with it and we go off with these possibilities and we all feel each other picking up on what whoever's putting it down. And mm -hmm. So the communication is more instantaneous with the Tucson guys only because this is where we grew up. Yeah. Right? And with the Danish guys, it's it was something different. It was really cool and... Um, very satisfying, but it was different. It was a different flavor. So what you saw in in Glastonbury was I, no, that, not that one I watched online, but I watched the I saw the Primavera show live. Uh, I mean, um, in person. But the Glastonbury show yeah. was uh, a one-off revisiting the Danish guys. Oh, okay. So, and what you saw at Primavera were, and it could be because you know the two young guys in the band are Latino. Uh huh. Uh, Mex American, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, from the area, from the Sonoran Desert, uh -huh. Gabriel Sullivan and Brian Lopez. Uh -huh. Maybe that had something to do with it, but it's just they exuberate um, a sonic prowess uh -huh. from their own neighborhood, yeah. how they grew up. And the guys in Denmark have something else going on. And I hadn't been playing with them, so they were going to help us out to do this Glastonbury gig because the guys from Tucson weren't going to be available then. It was like a week after, and they had to go home. So the Danes very kindly jumped aboard, and we gave it a shot, but we weren't together. And I, it, that's my fault for like being. Um, well, I wish it wasn't filmed uh -huh. because then it's out there forever. Because um, we got the job done, but it wasn't like good enough. Mm. Our standard keeps getting better, uh -huh. and that wasn't quite of the standard where we were just really locked in, like at uh -huh. the Primavera show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
and when also when you get to be this age and you don't lock in you you really feel the gravity of it uh -huh. like you can get through it uh -huh. you understand what's happening and uh -huh. it's only 45 minutes and all yeah, that. yeah yeah but it's because you, you work towards it, right? Yeah. It's a magic. When you lock in, you get this magic. It's a vitality, and it's like a vitamin, and, mm -hmm. and you feel like a kid again. Uh -huh. You are, I, I am 28 then again. You know, this energy thing, yeah. up until I see myself after in the mirror, and then I realize, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> but it, it, whatever that thing is with music, it's this... It's kind of like a magic quality, and it's ageless, yeah. and it's this energy, and it's an ancient energy, and when you tap into it like some ancient river, the water is always new, uh -huh. but the river's been there forever. Uh -huh. So that's all. You saw the difference. That's kind of cool. You saw the difference. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But if I were to quickly sum up the Glastonbury show, couldn't escape gravity. Yeah. It was a little bit lumbersome and uh -huh. slower. Like cool. just trying to, like everybody trying to remember in the band and me trying to remember, oh yeah, we can't do this thing and I can't go here because these guys haven't, we haven't been playing mm. together for years. Mm. So I was like, okay, there's only one or two songs that we really pulled off strong, I thought. Oh, okay. And the rest were near misses. Oh, it felt fine to us. I just thought that were, they were very different shows to us, to me. That's why. Like, uh, okay, okay, it just felt very different because like the Provera show, Provera has a special vibe. I've been Primavera, going there for... Yeah. We, we achieve buoyancy. <laughs> okay, buoyancy. Gravity lost that round. <laughs> okay, <laughs> buoyancy. Buoyancy is good. Feist, is this Leslie Feist? Yeah. Okay. And uh, is uh, the content uh, available to the general public? Uh, can we know what was going on? This is just, I, this is not gossipy. Yeah. It's, it's verbatim in the lyrics. I mean, yeah, but uh, um, of, of course. Of course. Uh, but uh, um, that, that was stupid. Was chit chat between two <laughs> friends. I met her in Barcelona, actually, uh -huh. with Chili Gonzalez 15 years ago. And I had. I fell out of touch with her right before she started making her own albums, and then I ran into her about two years ago. Oh. And then we were just talking like uh, uh, old camping buddies or something. Just mm -hmm. uh, there was so much stuff to catch up on, and and uh, so we had continued to text each other for a while, and it was kind of cute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you talk to anybody after a while, you're going to start talking about the core of existence and your love life. You're gonna, okay. you're gonna, because both of you have, I can, ah, that's pretty, it's just in the lyrics, exactly what was there in the okay, lyrics. Okay, uh, okay, I wasn't aware, so, so I was just, I was just like thinking that we were describing, but, uh, you know, sometimes lyrics, you get the feel of a song, but when it's not your, even, even being proficient, not, uh, when it's not your native language, sometimes you kind of, Oh yeah. You know, sure. you kind of just leave it for a second th thought, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't, uh, you know, playing. No, you're yeah. right. That's right. And I forget about that all the time when I'm over here, because it's well in Portugal, your English is as in Denmark is exception. Oh, thank you very much. <sighs> But it's... the rest of Europe, I never know if they're how much they're getting in my lyric mm -hmm. and my wordplay. But even then, like you kind of sometimes just like leave it. For, or it might hit you immediately, or it might be something yeah, you kind of discover yeah. uh, after a while. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, uh, another thing is that you mentioned Leonard Cohen and the lyrics, and uh, he just passed away. Um, do you, have you spoken on it, and would you like to? Uh, my friend wrote the book, his his autobiography. I'm your man. Mm -hmm. Her name's Sylvie Simmons. Mm -hmm. And after that book is when I gained my appreciation. After reading the book is when I gained the appreciation I have for him. And he, mm -hmm. That book blew my mind. I didn't realize half, most of that stuff. Uh -huh. That there was a fellow out there who took years before he would let a lyric go and apply it to song. And then for a full year, I only listened to him. I couldn't listen to anything else. Even the bad production from the late 80s, early 90s, I understood it. It was just used as a template 
um, even the unforgivable sax intro, so there's no cure for love. Uh, a song like Alexandra Leaving, there's so much density of wisdom and poetic license in that song. You own it's not even fair to listen to that song straight through without stopping it about 30 seconds in and letting that digest. And once it has, then going in for another, hold your breath and go in for another 30 seconds and then take that in. It's so much song in such a little, a, a perfect little compaction made even more intense by both of them singing uh, at the same time, which somehow makes it universal it tells you everything you need to know about falling in love falling out of love how your mind reacts to it the abstract tendencies the things we tell ourselves you could do a whole study on that song alone yeah so through sylvie uh, i followed her Exploits when she was starting to write the book, she would send me tons of emails. And she was on the trail to, and she went up to Montreal to visit his neighborhoods and his old friends. And I just got absorbed into his world and his uh, masterful ability to construct something as precious as Alexandra leaving. I mean, there's a ton of great songs, but that one, if only we can write a song like that once in our life. And he did it, he, he did, did it several times, many times, but that one. Anyway, sad to see him go, of course, but his timing was impeccable. His, his leaving was the only thing that got our mind off the elections. Everybody was so mm. sick, physically ill from the elections. Uh, I spoke with many of my friends, we were all feeling this uh, kind of a nausea, yeah, nauseous yeah. feeling throughout the day, realizing what had happened. And then he passed away and it got everybody's mind off the elections for a moment where we could enjoy something so positive in this life and so brilliant so inspiring, yeah. the exact opposite of what the elections had been. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was almost as if, you know, in his infinite wisdom or the timing of the sacred clock that plucks us when our <laughs> yeah. moment is ready mm -hmm. to be gone, because this is just the larva stage. Yeah, sure. We're just in preparation. Oh, absolutely. And he was, uh, he was keyed in, and he knew. And, and it felt like he, more than most, would be celebrating the true buoyancy. True buoyancy. Yeah, at this point. So it was sad that we don't have him, but we had him for so long. And this, he left us so much, way more than most. So do we, is it, we're thankful. So um, this is a show called Made of Things, so there's a thing for you to, to go check out right now. So. Bye-bye. Well, thanks, thanks, Hal. Thanks for your time. It's been lovely, as always. Yeah, it was good. Thank you. Thank the time matters but it was all right right <laughs> thank you <laughs>